Welcome to the Picking Nerds. Today, we're talking about something that every Commander player does three out of four games. Losing. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, Beezy, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. You know us by now every single day. We're here, and you can watch a Magic the Gathering video. So if you want to support all that nonsense, you can go to Patreon. It's the best way to do that. And I just want to say, since we make videos every day, happy birthday to everyone whose birthday falls on today. Happy birthday to all of you. And also, if you want to support the nerds without doing it directly through Patreon, you can buy Magic cards using our TCG Player affiliate link Ooh. in the description below. Go there, click the link, and now that you're on the website, guess what? What? Guess what, PZ? What? Guess what? What? Whoa. Okay, I'm sorry. Come down. Oh, sorry. They, they can support us by buying the Magic cards they were going to buy anyway at the same price without spending any extra money. Oh, I knew that, actually. It reminds me of another affiliate that I heard before where you can go to our Dragon Shield link, EU or US, and then we get a kickback on those orders as well. You're buying the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. Straight from the source. Yes. We use them on every single one of our decks. So, it's time to hop into this video. We're talking about losing. When you decide to play the Commander format, guess what? You've decided you're going to be a loser. <laughs> loser. Loser. <laughs> loser. Loser. That's just the way it's going to be because this is a four-player format, meaning mm -hmm. the average win percentage of a player will always be 25%. Yeah, we assume you're kind of evening out all four decks. Nobody's playing at a crazy power level above or below anybody else, but generally speaking, you're going to lose about three quarters of your game. So we want to talk about some good practices when you lose or good mindsets to be in when you enter a commander game in general, I think losing is one of the most not talked about things while also being one of the things that happens the most. Every time they play a commander game, almost every time, there's three losers. So when you sit down for a game of commander, you should try your best to win. Put your best foot forward and go for it. But don't be surprised when you lose because it's going to happen three out of four times. I think generally speaking, at least I can speak to the rules committee's sort of philosophy for the format, it's about fun first. Everyone's included, everyone's having a good time doing their thing. And I think it's more about, Commander is more about the journey than the destination. Losing is such a small percentage of what happens. I mean, you die on one turn of the game, now it's probably not even your turn, but you take, you know, nine, 10, 11 turns up until that point. So it's just, it's not the only thing that matters. I would care more about my experience during the game, which is a good thing to keep track of. It's easy to say at the end of the game when you lose that nothing else mattered, but it's like, you probably had a lot of fun that game. Yeah, exactly. So focusing on what happens over the game, all of the little interactions, all the fun things, playing with your friends and just, you know, killing their stuff, they're killing your stuff, board wipes, you know, interacting with each other, the politics, all of that is the journey. And then there's a result at the end. There's always going to be a result for a game of Commander. It'll be win, lose, draw. Those are the only three results and 99.9% .9 of the time. It's win or lose. And then 75% of the time, you lost because it's Commander. Right. And I think your deck building also needs to reflect your philosophy. If your philosophy is like, have fun, you know, none of X, Y, and Z kind of driving towards a certain type of game, then we should probably reflect that when we build decks. I think Joe has a better example. Yeah, so uh, for me specifically, the card that has won me more games of Commander than any other individual card is Expropriate. The card is obviously insanely, insanely strong in the Commander format. I've literally been playing it for the past three, four years since it came out because it's just been one of my favorite cards because it won me games. But every time I play it and I win with it, it's a groaner for my friends. My friends don't tend to have as much fun because... It tends to just end the game on the spot with this big haymaker spell, and it tends to make it feel like a lot of the rest of the game was kind of didn't matter. It, it gives the feeling of that, even though it's not 100% true. So what I have done recently, in just literally in the past two, three weeks, something very recent, is I just said, well, if every time I play this card, my friends appear to have less fun, I'm going to take it out of my deck. I, my goal is not just to win but rather for everyone to have fun. And when they have more fun, I have more fun. Yeah, you can all collectively agree as a group uh, how games are typically going to end so that nobody feels like when they lose, it's they were cheated or it was unfair. Not literally cheated in the sense that I'm palming board wipes, but like if I agree to sign up for an experience, like, hey, you know what, let's get into a game where combat's going to matter, and then somebody infinite combos me, I feel like, well, what happened? Why did you misrepresent what your deck was about? Yeah, it, it's very interesting. Like you, you were saying, uh, you also, we kind of had this miscommunication before where your mono white deck just kind of always comboed off in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a cool, it's a cool deck and I really like 95% of it, but there was this 5% that just kind of always made me groan. And you took that into consideration. You went, you know what? I can make this deck the exact same deck it is right now 
but I can focus into the combat side of it, take out these infinite combos, and do the same thing. Actually, this kind of just leads us into a point that we were talking about before. This is rule zero. You're talking, and not that we were talking about before, but that we want to talk about. Rule zero. Having the conversation before the game, figuring out what do you want? How do you want this game to play out? Do you want combat to be important? Do you want to see infinite combos? Determining all of this beforehand. And now if you have that good rule zero talk with your group, then you shouldn't be mad at the outcome. If you talked beforehand, you said, yeah, infinite combos are fine. Then BZ infinite combos, I really shouldn't get mad at them for infinite comboing. Yeah, what we talked about, um, trying to get the words that we were saying, it was like if you guys have a rule zero conversation and then at the end of the game, you're upset with something that happened that violated rule zero or you didn't feel like was part of it, that's not the problem. That's like a symptom of the problem. Yes. The actual problem, which you need to address, is the rule zero conversation, which everybody wasn't on the same page for. But if you try to just address every individual thing at the end of every game, that's just wasting your time. Go to the actual problem, not the symptoms, which is rule zero. Yeah, at the end, and not that you shouldn't have a conversation at the end of the game because I think it is also important. Yeah. But don't be accusatory. Don't tell call somebody out as in they're doing something incorrectly. They came in um, like... I did this to BZ by accident. Not, I, or I did it on purpose, but I didn't think of my actions correctly. I uh, BZ played his mono white deck. I knew the deck 100%. I said it was okay for him to play the deck. And I understood that he could combo with the deck. But then when he combo with the deck, I got upset, which I shouldn't have. What I should have said was, hey, I wasn't satisfied with that ending. And maybe next time um, I would prefer you didn't play that deck. Something along those lines could have been the conversation rather than, ah, oh, that was so Dumb. That was so lame. Right, poopy baby, poopy baby. Move some of the nice parts of that to the beginning of the, of the game, and then you don't have to have that problem. Another important part of losing the game gracefully or respectfully is sportsmanship. Just in general, obviously, you want to be a good sport. Treat everyone fairly. Treat everyone as you want to be treated. Hashtag golden rule. Raging, that's just not okay. There's no world where I'm going to say that that's an acceptable way to express yourself at the end of a game if you lost and nobody has really done anything else to you like outside the game. This is going to, and yeah, exactly. Your emotions shouldn't leave the game. Uh, you can be sad, mad in the game, but don't. As soon as the game ends, it's over. Let it, let it go. It should all completely end there. Now, should now raging is a little over the top during a game. I don't think you should do that ever. Um, but you can be emotional during a game, and it can be, and that can add more tension. It could be more fun. In fact, I like being super silly during games of Commander and overly the, over the top being like. Are you kidding me? You're killing my thing? And like just having that kind of fun, I think it adds to the game. I adding emotion, but raging and getting mad at somebody like to legitimate salt. To the point that they think it's affecting your friendship or something outside of the game of commander, that mm -mm. is never okay. Mm -mm. Big thumbs down. Uh the game is a success at the end if you had fun. That's kind of Not if you win. Right. That's kind of something you gotta look at. Where like if everybody had fun and you did your thing and you you enjoyed the experience during the game, that's where you look at success versus failure like it's not all about winning it's not all about losing of whether you won if it's a success and you lost to failure it's just like did i have fun did i enjoy things did i get to play a reasonable amount of magic all right success so i think this is something we, we kind of just go back to deck building a little bit when you build your deck you don't have to build it to win you should build it to do its thing because that's when you'll have fun it's not necessarily about winning the game i have a uh, umizawa deck uh the new umizawa satoru who, satoru who can ninjutsu things in now, if I'm focused on winning, what I do is I put Blightsteel in, I put Eldorazis in, I put in all these big, giant, over-the-top things that are going to result in wins when they hit the battlefield. But that's not my goal. My goal is to have fun with my friends, right? Ex execute the game plan. Execute the game plan. And as long as I'm executing the game plan, it's fun. So I'm putting in Archon of Cruelty. I'm putting in, um, you know, Shieldred. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in these things over. And even, even Jenga Taxis, which can be unfun at times, Compared to the, what I could be putting in, these things are way more fun and have way more chances for interaction than the other cards. And you can reflect, you know, going and executing your game plan and playing for fun in your deck building yet again. It's also important to mention that everyone should kind of show up knowing what the expectations are. 95% of the time, it's that everybody wants to win the game. So when you're in deck building, you can restrict yourself all day long. It's okay to play strictly worse cards because you're, you're aiming for a certain experience, but you're still showing up trying to win. Oh, man. Why not talk about a, a little exception to that rule, like where you put 100% to win every time you sit down? So I play a deck that plays my opponent's stuff, and sometimes my opponents don't play fun cards. So I won't play my opponent's unfun cards. The other day, I briberied somebody, and they had Yosei, and it was the best thing for me to get by far. I did not get Yosei. <laughs> I was like, I hate this card. I never want anyone to play it against me. I'm not getting it. So let's get into the actual action of conceding. When you scoop up your cards and you pick them up and you're dead, 
and you're out of the game. So the first thing I want to mention about that, I think this is a good way to go, is general heuristic, but I don't view conceding as a spell. It's not a spell you can cast. I don't want to leverage the fact that I'm dead and removing myself from the game to mess my opponents up. And then we're going to talk about something different that's very similar, but I think all of the actions that happen when you die, when a player loses the game, like all of your effects end, anything on the stack goes away, combat's over, all that stuff, I don't think it's very sportsmanlike to use that as an effect to mess somebody up. And I think playgroups can agree differently, but you should guys should be on the same page. So let's start with this. Um, it's a, a very important rule of the magic is that a player can concede at any time. The whole reason for this existence is that when a player sit down, if at any point they don't feel comfortable, they don't want to play the game, whatever reason, it doesn't matter. You're allowed to leave the game at any time. But when you take this rule and you abuse it, it becomes something else right. entirely. Joe's attacking me for 50, and his creatures have lifelink. And I'm upset that he's attacking me, or I just don't want to mm -hmm. I don't want to die. So I go, eh, I'll scoop. Combat's over. You don't gain any life. And now you're still dead. It's the same result, but you negatively impacted somebody with something that wasn't even a magic card. It's abusing a rule. Um, and abusing that rule is not, it's 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 mean-spirited. I will just say that. I think it's a very mean-spirited thing to do to use a concession as a spell to screw somebody over. I, I absolutely don't like it all. Say somebody, in, in another thing you could even do, someone swings lethal at your friend. You don't want your friend to die. Say you sat down with two randoms in the front. They swing lethal at your friend with your creature. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll scoop out so you don't kill him. I, that kind of stuff is just unwarranted. Don't con don't use concession as a way to impact the game. It just it feels like we went, went through all this trouble. They have certain effects on board and they're doing the thing. They're attacking you. And it's just kind of like you don't have any way to interact with them except to leave and kind of spite them. Now there's a huge different thing mm -hmm. from that that we'll get to in a second. But I also just want to say one solution for this that we always use is like concede at sorcery speed. If you go to your turn and you're like I just can't win this game. They got this, this, and this. I'm never going to be able to win. And you draw. I think it's okay to back out at sorcery mm -hmm. speed. But if you're passing and you have potential interaction and stuff's going on, it's like, sure, get that done. But don't concede. Like, may, let them kill you. Let them just kill you and play it out. I think you owe, uh, owe it to them. Unless agreed upon otherwise, which is always true of rule zero. But what's the other thing we're talking about when you die? Well, you have spells. And you can use your spells as spells uh, to affect the game. So what we mean by that is... You're going out of the game. I think it's actually beneficial for you to say, okay, you're going to take me out. I have two removal spells. I can't save myself. I'm taking out your best things. Or you're attacking me for lethal. All right, I'm going to use my blocks. I, there's no way I can live, but I'll I'll team up to kill your best creatures. Why that's beneficial to you is it shows that when you're going to die, especially when playing with the same friends, hey, you're going to kill me. That's fine. I accept that. But I'm going to use my swords to plow share on your creature and put you in a worse position. There's... Killing me has a downside. Just be aware of it. I mean, you're allowed to kill me. That's within your right because that's how we play Commander. But no, my sword supply share is getting your creature. So one of the ways I like to think about it is that the only thing that can change or move a magic game forward is the actual magic cards itself. You can talk about politics and people can say whatever they want, but you can't change life totals, move creatures, change any stats of creatures, affect the board in any way without using Magic the Gathering cards. If I say... Oh, I won't attack if you kill this guy. Well, you're using a magic card to destroy a magic card on the board according to the rules of the game. So when you're going to impact the game without using magic cards, that is generally frowned upon. And then, as far as I can tell, the only way to do that in Commander is by sort of, as Joe says, taking advantage of the concession rule where you're not using cards at all to impact the game, but the game has definitely changed now because you did that. One other example I can think of that is also frowned upon is in 1v1 Magic, you can use not doing anything stalling slow play as a way to impact the game because it will end it will end differently because you didn't play didn't use magic cards that is hugely frowned upon so the two examples here are definitely frowned upon and i think there's definitely a line to draw when you're talking about casting spells that affect the game which is how the game goes versus doing something else to affect the game which is impossible yes uh and like i said uh my stance on it is conceding is a rule that must exist in the way it exists for the protection of players Using that to your advantage to uh, to hurt somebody in Commander, I think, is a move that you should never do. Right. And if you're talking about where's the line, rewind the video of 20 seconds to what I just said. So let's go to sometimes you'll lose the game, even when you dying isn't the quote-unquote right play. This happens, I mean, every single person who's listening right now is like, 
oh man, they know exactly what I'm talking about. You got three players left in the game. You think the other two players are, are you know, one player's the threat and he's he's looking at who to kill. And he's like, I can attack one person for like a thousand. And they're like, okay, well, I think you should kill Joe. And Joe's like, I think you should kill me. If I die and it was like obviously the quote unquote wrong decision, there's nothing to say about it. You, I mean, you could say, I disagree. I wouldn't have done that. Man, this stinks. You're dead. Okay, it's over. You cannot like nitpick these decisions and stuff. Not only is Magic one of the most complex games ever created where you couldn't possibly know the information running through their head, but it's even if once they give you a reason, you need to stop. That's the reason. If they say, I'm scared of your deck, you can win out of nowhere. You always come from behind and do this when we play games. Like, that's it. You can't argue their their reasoning. Yeah, exactly. I Actually, even on a smaller scale, it doesn't even necessarily have to be going all the way to losing. A player's decision to use a removal spell, if they have a beast with them, they can destroy any permanent on the battlefield, and they choose yours? Okay. I mean, it might stink for you, and you might want to be a little spiteful. Don't argue. Um, I think that's really key. I think you have to go, really? I, maybe like, oh, really? I would a person destroy that. I don't, really right. don't get where you're coming from. You're going to kill my Grave Titan over his Cabal Coffers? And then they go, yes. It's like, oh, okay, we kind of got to back off now because we're verging on arguing. Yeah, and like, discussion, and like, I think it's such a huge difference. You can have a discussion with somebody that could probably go back and forth like three or four times. And then eventually it'll end. If you, if there's any heat mm. or argument, tension, you don't want this in your discussions. Just, you... You always have to be the person that lets it go because the other person might not be. I had to say it the other day. I can't remember yeah. what happened exactly, but I did a move, and I said something kind of like maybe silly. Oh, I call, I said the card was unfun that I killed. I said the card was unfun, and then he accused cards in my deck of being unfun, and he was waiting for a response. I'm like, nope, I mean, I don't want to argue. That's Sorry, I that, that wasn't trying to start an argument. That wasn't the goal of this. Let's just move on. Yeah, I can definitely kill a game or at least kill the momentum in a game and just suck all the fun out of it. So just don't cross the line of arguing versus maybe like mild complaining. Always be it. the person to, to stop it. Because even if you're the one who's, who, no matter which side it comes from, starting it or being the one using the removal spell or being the one killing someone or being the one killed, you sh just you can only control yourself. So knowing that, you have to be the one who says tension's coming arguments coming, you have to step back into the stop because you can't stop the other person from doing it. Right, and sometimes you can easily switch positions. You're killing somebody and they're they're upset about it and they don't understand why you're making it, but you have a reason. Well, we can use basic empathy to sort of, all right, switch. Now, I know that I wouldn't change when they've argued against me, so I wouldn't can't expect them to change when they have their own reasons. Yes, the players are allowed to be upset or mad at you. As long as it stays within the game, it's not really a big deal, and arguing is never going to make it better. All right, so to wrap up this video, I think the key to having fun in Commander is to accept the fact that you will lose way more games than you are going to win, and trying to have fun in them as much as you have fun in games you win. Is every game as fun as another? No. Some games are going to be more fun. Some games aren't going to be fun at all. That's going to happen in Commander. But you don't want to let winning or losing determine how much fun you had. Yep, determine how... Uh, how acceptable any method of losing is. Figure it out so there's no feel bads ahead of time. Change your decks to reflect the philosophy you guys all share. And then work on using only magic cards to impact the game and not sort of conceding out or uh, you could say stalling. Don't do that either. But uh, best practices, sportsmanship, empathy, all those good stuff. In communication with your play group. Well, like we said, um, if you don't want to be losing a certain way, I think one thing that I did specifically is I started to make changes to my decks and my, my play group started reflecting it as I talked to them. Like, hey, I'm taking out Soul Rings and I'm going to start doing a more combat-based stuff. I'm not going to combo as much. And my play group was like, okay, behold. okay, we can do it. And it, all I didn't even have to like force anything out of them. They just said, okay, I think, you know, well, we can do that. Let's see. Let's try and do that. And I think, I do think Commander has been more enjoyable for us since then. But that is our video. Special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. I love you guys as much as I can without making you uncomfortable. Seriously, I can't get over the fact that so many of you scrolling on this dang card right here support us. Thanks again. Insanity. If you want to support us another <laughs> way while also supporting yourself at the same time, which I would 100% approve of, TCG player, you can go buy cards for yourself. They get shipped to you when you buy them. <laughs> and because you started with our link, it's as simple as that. No extra money. We get a kickback. Yes. That is money. We appreciate that very, very much. Seriously, awesome. Another way to do the same thing is you could buy Dragon Shield using our affiliate links. US and EU links in the description below. You buy the best sleeves in the multiverse. Good sleeves. And you get them shipped to your house. I can't even express. I don't want to use other sleeves. I've used many other sleeves in my life. 
unfortunately. And I don't want to use anything else because I honestly believe these are the best sleeves. They got it down. They cracked the formula. It's over. We got the best sleeve. Until further notice, Dragon Shield is it. Ooh, I got a tidbit. About our lives. All right, so we went to our P.O. box the other day to see if anyone had sent us anything. We got something really cool. It's a discard. Now, when I first saw this, I assumed this was nothing. I'm like, what? It just says discard. But it has a magic back. So it's really cool because it is a magic card that just says discard. I think it's super awesome. And they sent us a letter with it. Yeah, when they're making the sheets for, I think this this one was Commander Precons, at the end of the sheet, sometimes they'll just be leftovers. And it's like, just toss this. Get rid of it. Discard it. Like, not discard a card, but literally throw this away. But <laughs> sometimes it ends up in the Precons. And we got a little note. Which I've been holding the whole time. This whole video. <laughs> Go back and check. <laughs> your hands are like this all throughout the <laughs> they video. They have to go check. Don't spoil <laughs> it. Hi, nitpicking nerds. I found your channel recently, and it blows me away consistently. Great job. I know how much work it is to create content, so thanks. In my town, I am known as the guy with strange luck when opening packs. My first pack of Commander Legends had a Jeweled Lotus. My second pack had a Foil Jeweled Lotus. First pack of Kaladesh at a draft had an Intervention Mana Crypt. You get the point. One time, I bought a Commander Precon, and it was missing three cards, and in their place were three discard cards. Definitely one of the more unique cards I've ever opened. I thought you might like one for your collection, and we would. Thanks again for the content. Joel McGregor, Baron Sengir for life. That. So, thank you very much, Joel. We appreciate... No, seriously, we very much appreciate it. This is super cool. It's like, this is one of the coolest magic things we own now. I mean, it's up there. It's super cool. It's a Thoughtseize proxy. It, it's a Thoughtseize proxy, or you can use it... Uh, as your, in your, for, as your discard pile. Ooh, you could the old school your... discard pile that's I'm not your graveyard. Bury my cards, yeah. <laughs> bury your cards and put them in your discard Ooh. pile. All right. Thanks for the card again. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.